Hi, this is Bob Brown. This recording is Sunday, July 12th, 2015. This is the uh, National Institutes of Health Protecting Human Research Participants. Um, I'm in Section 2. I'll try to do this as I go along. Uh, respect for Persons, and I took the first, the second quiz, and this is not designed to help people uh, not study for the quiz, but to try to go through th things that uh, could be helpful for my own personal memory and for anybody in the research area. Section 1 there, you see the three fundamental, fundamental principles of informed consent are voluntariness, comprehension, and disclosure. In other words, as a researcher, if you're conducting any type of research, it must be voluntary. Your Research subjects have to be voluntary. There has to be clear, concise comprehension by the research subjects, knowing what's going to happen. And there must be full disclosure if there's going to be any discomfort, uh, anything that could potentially cause them undue harm, stress, uh, not undue harm. Anything that causes undue harm won't be allowed. But if it's something, for example, if you're doing a blood draw and you have to go through the Red Cross uh, blood draw guidelines where you'd say, well, you could become faint, you, you must lay down, there could be bruising, swelling, you're going to have to put, you know, maybe a compress on the area where they, they drew the blood if you're a blood donor for the Red Cross. So that's be full disclosure so people fully understand what's going on. Question two, one of the requirements of informed consent is that subjects must be told whether they are eligible to receive compensation if they're injured as a result of their participation in the research. That's true. So you as a researcher, if you're working with an organization or you're getting a grant, be very aware of the fact that compensation is, will be, must be provided if a research subject is injured. And injury is not just physical. It can be emotional distress. It can be mental anguish. Um, so you have to be very, very careful. Uh, almost no internal review board will allow anything that will even stray close to causing any type of mental stress or anguish or uh, harm at all. They simply won't do it anymore, which is a good thing. Uh, so your research has to be very tightly controlled, and you won't be making the decision. It will be your internal review board will, that will decide whether this research is ever going to go out of the starting gate or not. Um, Number three, an informed consent for research studies given a research participation participant must complete the study. False. And any research uh, participant can leave at any time. Uh, that's true for yourself as well. If you're in a research study, you're allowed to leave the research study at any time. Question four, in order to participate in research, children must C, provide assent unless the IRB determines that they are too young. Children are very, very, they are a protected class. Pregnant women are a protected class. Fetuses are a protected class. Neonates are a protected class. Prisoners are a tech protected class. People who have psychological issues or are, are, are in uh, uh, psychological hospitals are a protected class. People in a state of coma or of unconsciousness are a protected class. Any of these people that you will have to have, a, you probably will not be able to research on any of them. Children under very, very tight guidelines with a lot of protection, a lot of professionals watching and monitoring the research. If you get the assent from the parents and the organizations, that can happen. Again, research is not evil. Research oftentimes saves millions of lives. But again, there are very strict guidelines for children. So the Health and Human Services guidelines will help you on that. Five, for research involving pregnant women, participation requires D, Considerations of risk and potential benefits for the fetus and the pregnant women, pregnant woman. The other ones, they questions the woman that women have completed the first trimester. That's women are protected as pregnant women are protected from um, from conception to birth. That the study be conducted first in men is irrelevant because the physiology of men is very different than women. Permission of the father um, that is not relevant to the study. However, it, as a researcher, you would probably want to make sure that everyone involved, uh, you know, the father is, would be involved as well. But in this question in, uh, from the NIH, it was not, re, was not part of it. 
I'm just my own two cents, I would say you probably want people to know. Question six, why might an individual have diminished autonomy? And in this case, it's all the above. They are a neonate. They're incarcerated or involuntarily confined. They are unconscious, all the above. So again, as I uh, related earlier, anyone who's in, who can be coerced should be, is, is probably in a protected state or a vulnerable population. In the material, they also point out if you have research assistants, you probably do not want them to be your research uh, participants because because there could be a coercion effect happening if you have undergrads working for you there could be a form of coercion whether you mean it or not that the coercion would cause people feel that they had no choice but to participate and an example given in this NIH study was basically shown that uh, you would instead of going to your uh, your you know your graduate level students or students who participate in your class or faculty members around you you would in fact not try to use that talent pool or research pool but you would put flyers all over campus so that you're not going to be accused of coercion or trying to single people out it was open to everyone again it has to be voluntary make it as voluntary as possible um, we'll go back up here uh, comprehension. Make sure it's very, very clear what you're doing, what can happen, what, if any dangers exist, how you're going to protect people's uh, information, their privacy, all these things, especially in, in the age of data uh, uh, being, breaches that are happening all through the U.S. government, you have to have very stringent guidelines on how you're going to protect participants' data, especially if you get into public health and you may be getting into re reproductive matters. All those areas have to be stringently guarded and never allowed to be the person's uh, identity to be breached or brought into public light. So very stringent guidelines. Highly recommend taking the NIH study. This has been Bob Brown for uh, discussion on the NIH, NIH study.